So this has been a really interesting year for me so far with royalties. Royalties from stock music libraries, royalties from Content ID, royalties from BMI. I even hear of some sync royalties coming. And supposedly, some of the bigger sync licensing money that I've seen. We'll see. But there, for all the great royalties that just seem to come in from everywhere, and we're going to talk about all those today, there are also disappointments that happen with royalties. You think you're going to have a lot and you just don't have a lot. Well, we're going to talk about that on today's podcast, the ups and the downs of music income and a music, especially royalties income, because that's one of the things we talk about on this channel. We talk about lots of things. So if you are interested in music royalties, you're going to want to stick around. Now, let me tell you one thing, my friends. Uh, this is Make Music Income Podcast, episode 89. But what I really wanted to tell you was the fact that we are going to have a lot of things that we talk about in the podcast. And if you are a person who's like, hmm, Eric, I'm not sure I want to stay around for uh, all your, your little announcements and all your things. Fine. You don't have to because I have timestamps in this video. And, and after this gets done airing here or is locked because we're live right now. But as soon as this is done being live, I will go in and put a timestamp to where the stuff happens that we're going to talk about here in a little while. So please make sure you pay attention to timestamps. Once tomorrow comes, I can go in and really edit this thing up and put timestamps on every little piece that are correct. But for today, as soon as this is uh, over, I can go in and put a timestamp for when we start talking about the meat of this video. If you're just so busy, you can't sit around and just lollygag and watch an hour long video. Well, that's, that's fine. Remember, folks, this is a podcast. It goes on a podcast. There's people listening to this in their cars right now. Well, not right now, but eventually there'll be people driving around in their cars with nothing else better to do except to hear my dulcet tones as they drive from place to place. Well, thanks everybody who is here in the house. Ragdoll Reacts, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Uh, Nick B Designs. Nick B Designs, I like that. Nick B Designs, thanks for being here. Uh, Andres, good to see you, my friend. Um, and Natuno Soundtracks, cool, very cool. Gra glad all of you are here. Uh, Andreas says he is busy to compose and produce. Good, same. Uh, I have been composing all week. We'll get to my week in just a minute. First, though, I want to introduce myself. My name is Eric Copeland. In case you didn't know, um, I am a music composer first and then a music educator second. That's the way I think of myself these days. Although, I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying orchestrating these days. Not sure if you are a orchestrator and or arranger, but to me, being an arranger and an orchestrator is almost just as fun as being a composer, and they all go together. Hello, Ron. Good to see you. Thanks for being here today. Well, welcome to, as I said before, episode 89, closing in on the big 90 and the big 100 episode here soon. So we've got so much going on. There's a lot to celebrate when we get to episode 100. That's for sure. But we talk about all kinds of music income here on the Make Music Income podcast, episode 89, uh, including sync licensing, including stock music licensing and micro sync licensing, and including music publishing and royalties. And that is basically our goal today is to really talk about royalties because I've seen a lot happen for me, a lot that have uh, come up this in the past two weeks. It's been a royalty time, a time of good royalties, actually. Uh, and again, royalties, is it's all relative, right? What you make in rel royalties is might be more or less than what someone else makes. And you might think, hey, this is really good for me. I made 50 bucks. Hey, this is really good for me. Uh, I made uh, 350 bucks. Hey, this is terrible for me. I only made a thousand bucks. And, and you know, it's just going to depend on who you are and, and your circumstances is if you are able 
to uh, make music income. By the way, we do have camera two today. Camera two is functioning and working. And so from time to time, maybe I'll come over here and talk to camera two. And people on the podcast are going, who gives a crap about cameras? Just talk. And so, all right, let's talk. Um, so I, the first thing I want to talk about before we move on here is uh, I have a webinar coming. And it's not a traditional webinar where you have to go and you have to put your email in and you have to, uh, I'm going to go go ahead and do it live. I'm going to do it live right here on Facebook, on, on YouTube. I just decided, and, and I'll probably do it on Facebook too. And uh, hello, Arco. Good to see you, my friend. How are you? Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do a live webinar, except you're going to want to be here for it because uh, I'm going to talk about why everyone is wrong about stock music income and microsites and all those kind of things. I know a lot of people, um, if you are having a lot of success, and I mean a lot of success with other things, sync licensing, uh, you're an artist and you do other things, maybe you don't have the time uh, or the inclination to put your music into non-exclusive micro uh, sync type libraries. That's fine. If you don't, uh, that's fine. But there's no reason to speak ill of it. It makes us money. It, it brought in some nice money for me this week. Just two days ago, I got paid by three or four different places. And two weeks ago, I got a big content ID check. I won't be getting a big content ID check at the next payday, but we'll talk about that in a little while. One of the downsides of this, but um, first of all, I want to talk about this this webinar because I, I believe I'm going to have it Wednesday. Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving, right before you're getting ready to feast on your turkey and your roast beast, uh, wherever you are around the world. I don't, I mean, obviously around the world, not everyone cel celebrates Thanksgiving like we do here in the States, which is just a gigantic feast of food and football and movies and just chilling. So before, though, you start this Thanksgiving weekend, I think think I'm going to go ahead and do my stock music uh, webinar introducing the stock music or the stock market, which is my course, and kind of offering some specials. You're going to want to be here live for that. That's going to be Wednesday, I believe probably about this same time. And on Wednesday, we're going to release the results of some uh, stock music polls and uh, some some investigating I've been doing on what people are making and how they're making it. And if they're making money in stock music, is it, what are the reasons? And I think I have found those out. I have done some scientific research folks on why this is happening. And I also want to talk about all the haters and all the people who are saying why stock music doesn't work and why stock licensing, stock licensing, uh, music licensing is just not a great idea. And some of them are kind of right. Some of them are kind of wrong. And then there are the people who are saying, oh, you can make tons of money on stock music. And they are also wrong. And so, but I do, yet again, I know people who are. And so you're going to be shocked, shocked, I say, uh, by some of the uh, results from our stock music poll when we have it. So you're going to want to be here on Wednesday for our, our seminar and our webinar for this. And because... If you don't, you're going to miss the deals. I'm going to be giving away deals. I'm going to be giving away things. I'm going to give away a stock market course, a hundred dollar value. I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give away a free consultation, even more expensive than a hundred dollars. I'm going to give you a free hour of coaching. I'm going to give somebody uh, a free ebook. I'm going to give free stuff, all sorts of free stuff. So you're going to want to be here on Wednesday. I'm not sure how I'm going to give it away yet. We're, we'll, we'll talk about that, but you're going to make want to make sure. I'll, I'll There'll be stuff coming just about every day from now until Wednesday to kind of push this. And then I am probably going to disappear a little bit for a four-day kind of uh, a fast, not from Turkey, but a fast probably from the Internet a little bit and uh, just only check in a little bit and take four days off, I believe, is going to be the plan. So uh, that is the webinar that's coming up on uh, Wednesday, 11, 22, November 22nd at about one o'clock, I would imagine. I'll have more information that'll be popping up on your screens wherever you follow us, whether it is um, 
on here on YouTube, whether you follow us. Yes, the webinar is free. It will be here on YouTube. I'm not going to do it on a separate site. No reason. When I have people, lots of people who join here and might even find the, the live webinar and have never even heard of us before. And so that would be cool for them to be here too. So I, I just, I, I've been, I've been struggling with how to do this webinar. I'm just not going to go. I've got so many new things. And speaking of new things, I want you to know about something we have called streams. And I think we have a clip. No, we don't have a clip, but we do have, uh, there's my script. We do have a little thing. Oh, I'm not ready to show you that yet. Uh, don't look at that. Don't look at that. That's not ready yet. Where is my Chrome? This is, and this is the stock market course I was talking about, where, why, and how you can submit your music to stock music. And so we're gonna, that's what the webinar is going to be all about is, is that kind of thing and, and where uh, you can, how you can be part of that. But what I wanna talk about next is streams. And I only have 4,000 screens open right now. This is streams and uh, this is kind of a new uh, teaching community that I've started. A lot of you are, um, being part of that, we closed our eyes. Thank you. Thank you, Ragdoll. We'll be there soon enough. You'll be back and get to see some things. Um, I, I'm not, I am going to show you that actually, but this is streams. I would love for you to be part of it. Um, let me just show you a little bit inside and you can, you can see a little bit. No, not you. Um, I had to do it this way. So you can, you can come and see inside of streams and it's a really cool little community that we've started it's really starting to uh to amp up we've got lots of people doing stuff we've got lots of polls in here we've got things that people are commenting on it's just so much fun and it's bright and shiny it's not some dark dingy discord where you feel like you're in the basement with some kind of cyber programmer no this is a beautiful community place that we're going to have all sorts of stuff. And all the free stuff is here. I We talk about sync licensing. We talk about micro sync. We talk about DSPs. We talk about what we're talking about today. R royalties. We do polls on these kind of things and stuff. And so it's very fun. People uh, put their own uh, conversations in here and we all answer it. And we all talk about this kind of stuff. Plus, look at this. You can get all the free stuff that we have all the ebooks we have, the checklist we have, the tools to make music income, how to upload your course, your music to Pond5, and all these free courses that we have, they're all right here. And then we do get in to other streams that we have that I'll talk about later, but because uh, I'm going to be trying to fill them up for 2024. We're going to really be doing some teaching and some extra things. We've got our mastermind, which already we've got three or four people that are involved in that. And we start, we do that every Tuesday and we're having fun doing our mastermind. And so you can be part of that stream. You can be part of the flow stream, which is kind of a private feedback stream, or you can get all of them and including the the teaching stream, which is going to be a Friday class that we're going to have, or at least a weekly uh, Zoom class where you can ask me questions. I'm going to be teaching on a subject, and I think I have the idea for what that subject is going to be. So this is Streams. Come on in. The water's fine. Come join Streams and just go to this page. You'll see, you'll see choose a plan, and you can just choose this one for free right here. Just access it, and then introduce us to who you are put your music in the feedback section come be part of streams the water is fine come on in okay that's what i wanted to show you also if you're a little shy you're not sure about streams yet you can also just go to our website and our website always has in the store free stuff and you can get all the free stuff there too so makemusicincome.com also works for the same type of thing so there we go. All right, back to the show here. Now let's move on. We've talked about streams. We've talked about stuff. Let's just talk talk for a minute about my week. It's been another interesting week. People ask me, why do you talk about your week? Who cares about your week? 
Well, you do. I mean, if you are a person trying to live a life of music and music income, I try to tell you how I'm, what I'm doing in order to make that music income. That's kind of the point of the whole show, folks. And so I want to just talk a little bit about my week. I did some uh, more Christmas. I am, I am on Christmas. We're going to talk about holiday. You're going to see some results of holiday music. Uh, if you missed my video, by the way, well, let me just go back to my uh, Chrome here for a second. And if you missed the video that I did just the other day, well, we can see it right on this front page here. Uh, make holiday music. I went in depth there in that video and I talked about where I've made, how much money I've made from all the different places percentage wise from all the different libraries and stuff. And you're going to see on my BMI statement how I made money this month and, and the majority of what I made of the, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks that I made from BMI this month or this check were from holiday music. And so it's the gift that keeps on giving. And the, this holiday album that was that made me this money was put out two years ago. The gift that keeps on giving on stock, on sync, on Spotify, with friends and family. It's just it's just something you need to look into. So uh, I released this this week, but I am working on even more music right now uh, for the holidays, uh, especially for Christmas. And we are in the midst of a very strong um, mastermind talking about this. Rob Green, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, we are talking in the mastermind right now for the next eight weeks on, it's a holiday mastermind talking about holiday music, not just Christmas music, but also any kind of holiday music because um, I just released a video today for a guy and I was like, dude, this will be great for Father's Day. You've got to re-release this on Father's Day and make a big deal out of it. Um, we have Easter, we have Mother's Day, we have 4th of July, we have all the patri patriotic holidays. So I'm a big believer in that. But all that to say, uh, I, I really believe in holiday music. And so I've been creating more Christmas music, mainly because I've had some other, some briefs that have asked me for help more holiday music. And so I am trying to fulfill them right now. And I just have ideas. I've got ideas. I have this, this kind of music I call Hallamus. And it is music that I do between Christmas and, and between Halloween and Christmas. And it's kind of nightmare before Christmas type of stuff where I'm taking Christmas music and I'm making it into Halloween sounding. And so I developed uh, one of those yesterday and another one this morning and uh, a lot of cool stuff is happening with that and I just have fun doing it. Um, I did go live yesterday um, on Hello Composer. So if we look back here on this screen, um, I did go live yesterday and, and composed a little bit only with Musio, which is a, um, I don't know if you have, um, used Musio or heard of Musio, but it's basically, um, here's an example of what it looks like. And um, it basically, uh, that's not what it looks like. Where's what it looks like? Here's what it looks like. And so a lot of a lot of instruments available to you in Musio, and I got it for 49 bucks for the year. That's kind of a student and education price. So if you're a student or educator, you can, um, you can get this for $49 for the year. And it's all the CineSample stuff. It's crazy how much stuff is in it. So, uh, but you, I think you can get it for $99. And, and I would watch Musio because they'll probably have a big sale. And if they do, I'll let everybody know about it. But I did go live yesterday and worked on another Christmas song that also had kind of a Bach uh, uh, part to it. So go check it out. It's kind of a, it's kind of a minor review of, of, of how Museo by Cine Samples works. So if you want to see that, go and check that out because I talked about it quite a bit through that. And it's not overly long. I think it's only about 37 minutes long because I had to do other things yesterday. I had to go. So that is uh, what I did yesterday. And just more Christmas music and working for clients and teaching at school and teaching online and having our mastermind. Just so much that goes on in any given week with what I'm doing. But dudes uh, and, and dudettes, who, if they're 
<laughs> folks, uh, there are lots of things to do to make music income and uh, not always enough time to do them all. So I was doing, I was literally working on a client's uh, song that he's going to go to Nashville and sing on, um, on, on, what is it, what day, uh, Monday. And so, cause they, they've got, they're going to be tracking. And so they have to have some uh, some roughs. And so I was literally working on a Spanish song rough for this client before we came on live here, up to like two minutes before. So welcome to the excitement of music income. All right, so uh, a little bit of news this week, and uh, I'm not sure I see our friend in who loves our news thing, but it's time for the news. That's right. It's the news theme. And uh, again, one day, probably after Christmas, I will be updating that news theme into a full queue. Uh, so watch the Hello Composers channel for that too. And by the way, if you're not registered or not subscribed to Hello Composers, uh, that YouTube channel, please go over and subscribe to it. I would appreciate it. You find a link down below about the Hello Composers channel. All right, in today's news, uh, what I want to talk about is something that everybody is talking about. And uh, it, I just, I think it's something that w everybody is kind of freaking out a little bit. And that is that Spotify is changing its royalty model. Arco, I think you sent me something on this the other day. And everybody's talking about it. And the what seems to be happening is that they are just saying, you know, if you're not going to work hard enough to get people listening to your streams. And everyone just thinks it's a democratic model. Of course, they think that about all music in the music business, that we're, we just should make money because we are um, we, we put stuff up onto Spotify. But the truth is, if you don't work your Spotify channel, you should be able to get 1,000 plays on a song on your, on your Spotify channel. Now, I, I'm as guilty as anybody, I, I am, tossing tons of, of stuff up to Spotify this year, or I should say up to DSP, all the DSPs this year. But there are many of my songs, I'm sure, that don't have a 1,000 listens. Well, what they're talking about right now is that if you don't have a 1,000 streams on a track, then you will not get paid for those streams. Now, let's do a little math here. The, the, the truth is, if you're getting paid zero 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 five times a thousand we're talking about 50 cents we're talking about you know just a, f a few bucks at the at the most and guess what they're what they're saying is you don't deserve that 50 cents or that dollar and we're going to give it to the people who are really feeding this beast and really working their songs and are real artists who are really making getting fans on Spotify and, and watching it. And there's a kind of a, I don't know, I'm back and forth on this. You can tell me where you are with it, but I think, you know, this is one of those things that you, you can make your decision on if you're mad about this or if you're not mad about this. But I do want to show you one page that you should check out, and that is my friend Andrew Southworth, who we have an interview next week, and he's going to be on my channel. I was on his channel um, a few weeks ago, but he did a really good video here talking about that stop, Spotify will stop paying royalties on 67% of tracks in 2024. And I kind of agree with him. Um, and so go watch that video. It's, it's right down here and see what you think of that. Here's my kind of take on this, to be honest with you. Um, I, I kind of feel like that if we are not going to work hard to put our music up on Spotify and get people there like he does and Tom Dupree and those people who teach how to get on your music on Spotify and how to get lots of streams and, and do all that kind of stuff. There is some work that you can do on that. Just like trying to get people to watch your YouTubes if you make YouTube videos or trying to get people to go to your stock music sites or trying to get people to do anything for you to listen to your music. There are things you can do for that. There's marketing you can do for that. And the problem is that most people are not doing any marketing at all, trying to get people to listen to their music online. And that's a problem. Just because you make music doesn't deem you worthy 
of making a lot of money unless you work it and you've got to work it hard. And this goes for any music income that you have, including the royalties that we're going to talk about today. Another guy I heard and I kind of agree with, I can't remember who it was, but he said, why don't you just push people to Apple Music? They pay more anyway than Spotify, way more. And so does Amazon. And so do some of the other place. They made many, many, um, uh, there are many other DSPs. When I say DSPs, I mean digital service providers like Spotify that play your music. Now, Spotify is the king, just like Netflix is the king on uh, television streaming. But Spotify is definitely the king of of music, uh, of, of streaming for music. But if you don't work it, you know, you can, you can choose to work hard on getting people to your, your Spotify streams, or you can choose to send them to Apple Music if you don't think you're going to be getting paid on Spotify. So there are other answers. But the biggest answer, I think, is you've got to get off your butt and you've got to get people over to your streams, if that's important to you. And so you can't get all outraged about this Spotify not paying me if I don't get a thousand streams. Well, you should work hard to get a thousand streams. You should work hard as an artist, as a uh, a, a, a streamer, so to speak, um, and get your music out there. And if you're not getting your music out there, you might not expect any money coming back. And so, and this goes for all the things that we talk about on this channel. Art is in the house. Good to see you, Art, from Art Ukraine. I hope you are safe and good there. Andreas says, thanks for listening. I made 200 streams in the last 14 days. I hope in 2024 I reach this threshold. It sounds like you might. But also, I know that you are working it. I know that you are telling people to listen, and I know that you are focused on getting people to that site. And let me tell you, Spotify ads, I mean, uh, Facebook and Instagram ads work. They do not um, take much time. They are certainly something that, uh, and they, they're not that expensive. And so uh, if you want to get people to Spotify, there is a way, there are ways. And just go watch Andrew Southworth or Tom Dupree the third. They talk about this kind of stuff. All right. Well, it is time. Those people who were waiting around for a timestamp about when I'm going to talk about today's issue, it's time to talk about the ups and downs of music licensing. So it's been a kind of a fun week for me. It's been a interesting, I'd say, two weeks of income from so many different sources. But today I'm really focusing on um, music royalties. I should, I've got to change that. Um, we're talking about the ups and downs of music royalties. The ups and downs of music licensing is a whole other conversation. But today I'm talking about the ups and downs of music royalties. And there are times when you get that BMI or ASCAP or whatever PRO you're with and they send you uh, one and it is literally $20. And you're like, why? How is that possible? And then there are times when you get three digits, four digits. I don't think I've ever had a four digit check, but I know people who are having them. I know people who are probably having five digit checks that pay them uh, every quarter and that make up their, their, their income. So uh, they're, that's all they do is sync licensing. And so sync licensing pays mainly through PROs as far as the back end. And so Let's uh, first, though, I want to talk about content ID. And this is a whole video that I did last week. If you were to go to my um, to my channel, um, you would see that I talk a lot about that because um, that is um, a big part of what I of what we do. And I went live last week, I believe. Was it last week I went live and talked about it? Uh, yeah, content ID matters. And you can find that video um, just on, I'll put it in the, in the links below. But I got into the very important reasons why you need to do that. And one of the very important reasons why I thought you need to do that is because I had just received a $500 check for a quarter. And uh, actually, it was, a, it was for two quarters because I didn't reach the threshold in quarter two. But then I had a big quarter three. I, I had two quarters that finally added up. And when they added up, they added up to about $500. 
And this quarter that we just got reported on, which I believe was September, uh, I did not do that great, and I did not reach the threshold again. It's just like two uh, quarters ago. So we'll see what happens there. It's going to take me now a little while to make more content ID money. So that $500 check I got last couple of weeks ago, that basically helped pay rent and, and get the, make the first of the month very healthy financially. But then yesterday, I see what I made in September. And it was pretty disappointing. It actually was the first time that claimed videos went down. So uh, it didn't go down by much, but it, it went down. And when you get one of those down type of months on any of these type of income streams, royalty st streams we're going to talk about, it's kind of disappointing. And so uh, I was riding a high of having it, bragging about a $500 check, but then not going to get even a check on the next uh, pay date for Content ID. So them's the breaks, uh, folks, here on <laughs> Music Income Life Reality Show here. Um, and that's really what this is, by the way. This, this whole channel is not an entertainment channel, although I think sometimes I can be pretty darn entertaining. <laughs> but... Um, this is really more of a reality show where I am showing you what a real person uh, who works hard at trying to put um, uh, make a lot of music income. And, and the, really the only reason why I started this channel was almost to do a report of what happens to me. <clears throat> and I'm not even a guy who makes a, a grand amount on any of these things. There are people making six figures in multiple six figures in sync licensing. I, I won't, that'll be years for me to, to get there. There are people who make um, six figures on stock. There are people who make uh, five, four and five thousand dollar months on stock music and that's their entire income. I don't think I'll ever be there. Uh, I, I'm lucky to make two or three, four, five hundred is a great month for me on stock music licensing. Royalties coming in, you know, I just don't have large income royalty checks coming in yet. So it's all a build. Although when we get to the end of the year, I can already see, um, I just added up the numbers and already here we are in November. We're not even to the end of the year yet. I am, I am growth. I have growth in every, almost every category as far as the things I'm really working towards. So especially uh, sync licensing has been, is going to be a exponential growth this year of, of income. So all of this kind of stuff. Um, hey, greetings to you, uh, Bradford. And here's a little something for you. You missed the news. So that's just for you. Um, but yeah, all of these things are things that, you know, I am going to uh, talk about at the end of the year. As usual, I do an end of the year income report how things have improved from 2023 uh, uh, and, and back to 2022 and 2021. Because this whole channel really started in 2021 as I was getting started with my stock world. And I was getting, uh, you know, kind of started with everything. And uh, I, I just wanted to talk about the different parts of income that I was seeing. And so a lot of people were having different experiences than me. And so I thought it would be interesting for you to see what happens to a full-time music creator and educator only doing music things. That's the only way I make music income. There's no other jobs other than music jobs that I do. So uh, I thought it might be interesting to you to see that. Um, Art says, I have not been part of the PRO content or others. And I have one question. Can I register already use music on stock music with these distributors or just new music? No, sir. You may register your non-exclusive stock music anywhere you like. That's the beautiful thing about stock music. This is one of those th questions I get a lot and I really need to do a video on it because this is the one thing that people really ask a lot. They, they are not sure about. Can you put the music that you are putting on to stock music libraries like Pond5 and stuff. And then can you take that and put that on to Spotify and Apple Music and put it out through DistroKid? You absolutely can. It's non-exclusive. That's the beauty of it. 
You put stuff in content ID, you can put it in there as well. The, the beautiful thing about non-exclusive, and I'm gonna be trying to be way more non-exclusive in the coming years, and that is to have a, a, a large, large, maybe 75% of my catalog be non-exclusive so I can put it on on all the distributors. I can put it on all of the stock music sites and the music uh, micro-sync sites and the other little sites like that. And I can pitch it directly to sync agents and I can pitch it directly to music supervisors should that possibility come up. This is very important to have your own non-exclusive catalog. And when you're working with people like Pond5 and Motion Array and, 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 and a lot of these people, you have absolute control of non-exclusive. So absolutely, Art, you can put your music up to these distributors, and you should. Even with what's going on, you should do that. Um, so yeah, definitely do that. Definitely put your music up to um, all of these places, and especially Content ID. Uh, Ragdoll React says, I am mainly doing pop production, and now I, I am on more trailer pop, cinepop music for TV show and movies. And I'm thinking of getting into Song Trader. What's your point on that? Oh, dude, do it. Um, I love Song Trader. And Song Trader, when, when it was kind of announced, the kind of the goal with Song Trader was that you could put your music up on um, this different place that could possibly get your, let's say, trailers into different television shows or movies or things like that. I'm not sure if that's happened for me on Song Trader, but what has happened for me on Song Trader is I have gotten a lot of things into their monetization stuff on hold music, um, different albums and compilation albums and different things like that. I've even did distribution through Song Trader. It's not bad. And let me tell you, that has made me a good amount. Um, if I look at my Song Trader, I have it up here. Um, I was going to talk about all my... I've got yeah, 415 bucks this year so far, and I haven't done anything but just load more songs into there. As a matter of fact, I just put 100 more songs into Song Trader, so I expect that to go up. Um, as And it's my third biggest stock, quote-unquote, micro-sync income this year. So as far as I'm concerned, absolutely put everything in Song Trader. Keep, if everything is non-exclusive, it goes in Song Trader. Uh, it's just another site, just like Content ID, just like distribution that we put stuff in. So absolutely, yes, put your stuff into Song Trader. It's a, it's a great place for stuff to be. You never know what could happen. Just make sure that you check all the monetization options. And once you get in there, you'll see what I mean. There's all these monetization options. You could even do your content ID, as a matter of fact, through there. I just think that any site that does all the things that they do, and they just bought Bandcamp, so there's a whole, who knows what they're going to do with all that, but they they could definitely uh, have possibilities for your music through Bandcamp as well. But I wouldn't do Content ID through Song Trader. While they do a good job at just about everything, I, I like having a place like Identify that really focuses only on Content ID, and that's all they focus on. And I'd rather have a bulldog like that focusing. Okay, enough on Content ID. Thanks for those questions, good stuff. Now let's move on to my PRO. Now, I, I got a PRO check this uh, this week, yesterday. I got PRO money deposited into my account. It's like just a gift that just flows right into your account and you have money. And so it's very cool. And so I do have uh, that up on here. And I do want to show you uh, the, the main part of what I got paid. It wasn't like stunningly life-changing money, but uh, it's 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 heading in the right direction. As a matter of fact, I did the numbers yesterday and I am up 250% from last year as far as sync so far. And I think that's going to go up even more, including PRO, including sync payments. Uh, it's, it's working. And so let me show you this, not that. Let me um, show you this document right here. Do you see that? Yeah. So uh, I'm just going to put me... I'll put me right here. Um, I want to show you, especially down here, this part that you can see. Um, this is the majority of what I got paid, and most of it was from this. Um, let me see. Most of it was from this international performances. 
Somebody in Germany loves me. Thank you, whoever in Germany loves my music because I get paid from Germany a lot and that's been the last little bit I've gotten, but just here in Germany. Um, 71.11 for one song and uh, $90 for another song. This song gets play every, um, every season. And I just put a new album of Christmas um, dramedy on the same library, so I'm hoping that's gonna do well this year and for every year afterwards. Like I said, the gift that keeps on giving. Remember folks, I told you, Christmas stuff. And look here, Mozart's Sleigh Ride, which is another kind of uh, Christmassy type of thing that I did off of a Mozart tune. And, and this Ding Dong Merrily on High, which is always popular at Christmas time on television shows. And so there we go. Uh, all those together, uh, including this coming home song, which is kind of holiday feeling. It's kind of like I, always, I kind of wrote it for like a you know Hallmark holiday movie. But if you just look at these these things right here, you can see that uh, and it's, it, Ding Dong Maryland High was in this Catering Christmas, which was a film. Uh, this was on in SoCan, but it's been on Hulu and it's been on another um, place, another network of some kind but you can see 176.79 that's a big part of this 200 ish dollar check that i got yesterday from bmi and again it's for christmas music so i'm kind of making two points at once here you can do well with uh with christmas music and uh you can see where it all came from and mostly it was from international performances uh okay so art says Good, but when you upload new tracks to stock libraries, they often act if there's content ID. Do you check the box that says no? No, I check the box that says yes, and I put them on content ID art, and you want to do that because content ID is not hurting you. You you might think, oh, people are gonna check and see if it's content ID. People won't care. People do not care. People want the music they want, and they want it then. And he says, if you have to change the settings of already published tracks, what if they are now with the content ID? Just put them with content ID. Go in and change it if you need to. Tell your libraries you're going to change it. But there's no reason you shouldn't be putting stuff on content ID that are on libraries. You're, you're hurting yourself if you don't. Nituno says, I'm good on stock music, but sync licensing is so hard to enter. No doubt. And I that's interesting you say. I do have an ebook called Getting Into Sync and uh, or Getting In Sync. And I'm getting ready to expand that into a course. Uh, and I'm going to have interviews with all the people that I know who are in sync uh, sync licensing and how they are doing it and uh, how they got into it, how they started, including my, my own story. And you can find that at my website. It's called Getting in Sync. And it just talks about how I got in and what I did. And I think uh, I have a very foolproof solution to getting into sync, but it requires some things that not many people are willing to do. And that is to, you've got to make great music and you've got to uh, find the right contacts and you've got to market yourself to death. Um, I mean, you've got to, and it's not even marketing. You're not marketing yourself. You're just trying to make uh, and network and find the right people to be involved with. So going to be talking about that in this new course, Getting in Sync. It's kind of advanced because I've actually have a course about royalties that's going to go next uh, in my course making. And then I'm going to do a course on Getting in Sync. And uh, there's so many courses I have in mind. But yeah, uh, I understand. And you need to get into sync licensing. Uh, you don't need to stop doing stock, though. Uh, people think, oh, I'm, I'm done with stock. That's for minor leagues. You know what? Uh, there's a lot of stuff I write that is just not right for, for sync licensing. It's not right for television. It's not right for movies. It's not right for, for advertising. But it fits for people who need it for their... Um, for their other stuff, for their, for their videos on YouTube, for their own use. So good. I'm glad. Come on in. The water's fine. So yeah, that will be coming up. But BMI uh, is where I do my PRO business and it seems to work fine for me for now. We'll see if I ever change to something like CSAC or something like that. But right now BMI seems to do well. I wish they would update their interfaces. I've been watching ASCAP lately and they're online interface seems so slick and so much more contemporary and BMI's looks like it did 20 years ago 
it looks exactly the same. So now that you got money BMI, you should uh, upgrade your online and make it a little slicker for us if you don't mind. All right, so that is BMI. I'm, I'm happy to see some, uh, a, a big actually raise in my 2023 BMI statements from 2022. We're headed in the right direction as far as sync. And so, and some lots of interesting things have happened, been in lots of networks. And so it's just been a blessing and a lot of fun. All right, so now let's talk a little bit. We're gonna get back to sync in just a minute, but let's talk about stock music income. And it was a good week for stock music income. If I, uh, I'm not going to bring this screen up, but I did have it somewhere. But yeah, it was not bad for me. Uh, it was about 170 bucks this week that just came in from Motion Array, from Audio Jungle, and from Audio Sparks of all places. And um, there might be a few other dollars coming from other places. And then if you add in the BMI check that came in, that's almost three. 60 headed towards $400 of, of, of income of just in a few days, in two days of income from these different things. But uh, yeah, about 170 or so from, from three different libraries. And I actually get another Audio Jungle. I have another, a second Audio Jungle account that's an exclusive account. And it's paying out 60 something bucks next month. So, and Motion Array is doing very well so far this month for me. Well, at least as, as well for me. You know, everybody, what I find when I, in our Discord and in our polls and things like that is everybody has an idea of what is good or bad for them. And some people are like, I'm only getting 100 downloads a day. I'm like, dude, I get 10 downloads a day. You know, you, you, it's, it's funny how people get angry for something someone else would die for. And so I, I'm seeing that in stock music income, when I when I keep um, when I did a lot of the research, and I'm, I'm we're having these long uh, discussions on our Discord about how much Motion Array is paying and how much this person's paying, and we and we have sometimes very pointless uh, things because they end up correcting how much they're paying. But um, Pond Five and and all these places, everybody has a different standard on what is good. Some people have been making so much for so long that if their income goes down from five hundred to four hundred dollars a month, they're pissed off. And can you imagine making four hundred dollars a month on one library? Uh, I, I have had that happen before on a few on at least on Motion Array back in the, back in the good old days. But uh, this at right now, if I can get a month like this where I'm making one hundred seventy to two hundred dollars. Uh, or as far as cash in hand, where they actually paid me on a day, that's that's a good help on the fifteenth for the fifteenth bills. Bradford Knight says, when I release a song, I'm registering it with BMI, identify the MLC and Sound Exchange. Is there anywhere else I should be registering it? That's a great question. Um, it sounds like you're covering all the bases. BMI is your PRO. That's catching performance rights. Identify is catching content ID. The MLC is catch, catching mechanical royalties of, of your United States streaming only. That's what the MLC collects is, is perf, mechanical royalties from streaming, from music streaming. And Sound Exchange captures any non-exclusive, non-interactive uh, music playing from places like Pandora, places like iHeartRadio, all the radio stations that might play something of yours, uh, or TV stations that have online broadcasts, like like uh, um, just website broadcasts, or uh, of course the biggie, which is Sirius XM Radio. If you're lucky enough to have S Sirius XM Radio, so I'm not sure. I mean, there is. Music Reports has started to pay a little bit of all things. I don't know if, about you, but I've gotten Music Reports um, incomes checks for three cents before uh, through the years. I mean, going back t 10, 20 years. But now they're starting to be a little bit more substantial. You could go in and register everything at Music Reports and be a part of what all the different licensing th things they have going on. And so to me, it's a little bit like sound exchange. You have to, um, you know, put up a, a, a 
sheet that has all your stuff for certain things. I need to continue filling out my music reports. I think I'm missing money for music reports because they pay from a lot of places. So um, that is something that you might want to check out. But other than that, that BMI and Identify MLC Sound Exchange, that seems like you're covering most of the bases there. Again, I might suggest that you put all of these in all of the places that you can, including um, you know, Song Trader and, and take advantage of all the monetization things that they have. You won't be able to do the some of the stuff like you won't be able to do um, their content ID system since you're already with Identify. But everything else. Now, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to do some research on Song Trust, but um, my problem with Song Trust is they seem to get in the middle of your BMI your the MLC and all that kind of stuff. It's, it seems like I, I need to find out how they interact with those because I like handling my own BMI registration. Thank you. I like handling my own MLC and identifying all that stuff. Uh, stuff and so, um, but it sounds like you're covered and it sounds like you're doing a great job and that's a great great question and a great uh, process. It sounds like you've got there. All right, let's move on to uh, really the last thing I have to talk about, and that is Sync Royalties. I was told the other day by one of my libraries that they have one of the bigger Sync libraries checks uh, that are getting ready to issue to everybody. And so this has been something this year that has that has finally come in. You know, when we, when we are told about Sync licensing, when we're told that, ooh, you can get your music and TV and film, and what's going to happen is that you're going to get Royalties up front, and these royalties up front, and then you're going to get back in royalties through your PRO, but you're going to get these royalties up front called sync royalties. These are what t television shows and uh, advertisers and things like this pay up front in order to have, you know, for you to make some money up front. But the problem is, it's not very upfront. It has to go through whoever owns the library. It has to go through the library. You sp they split that with you, and they usually only pay these these sync royalties payments out bi-quarterly, which means uh, twice a year or bi-yearly, bi I guess I should have said. And they, they pay it twice a year, which is cool. But uh, it's not exactly upfront, but it is a nice check that comes in. And so far I've gotten, you know, a couple three-digit checks from them from two, two or three different libraries. And so having that come in, that's pretty cool. And I think there's another one that's going to come in this year. So my stock, my sync royalty checks are going to be, um, continue to be a thing that bring income in. And again, all of this stuff, whether I'm talking about stock or I'm talking about content ID, I'm talking about BMI, all of these things are going to require more songs, more music out there. You want to ask me, how do I get in to sync? How do I get into stock? How do I get into this more more, more. If you want to do well, you still have to to do stuff. Um, Art says, another stupid question, can I register music from the PRO after I have posted it on the stocks? Yeah, I do. Actually, I do it, my process happens, uh, I put it on Pond5 first, only because that's where I kind of use as a database to copy from for other libraries. And then I put it on Motion Array next. And then uh, as I'm putting up on Motion Array, I go ahead and I register it to my PRO at that time. That's when I do it. So, I mean, it, it's not going to get directly sold that day. So you probably have a, <laughs> you have a few hours before you have to really worry about it. And even that, the PRO is likely not going to ever collect much from stocks, just so you know. I mean, we're not talking about a lot of money that that you're going to make from stock music licensing on your PRO. I've only seen bits and pieces. I don't know if I see anything on this particular statement here that has anything to do with stock music licensing. There's a, you, a few YouTube plays that possibly could come from that. Um, but everything else seems to be, I, can't, I just can't tell if there's anything that might have happened or paid me that, there's another Hulu thing, but something that would have paid me because it was on a library. I'm trying to find the name of something I've only put on stock and I just don't see anything. So I, I've only seen, well, there's one. Napster Premium is on here. Um, so 
it's just going to depend. I, I don't think that's something you need to worry about too much. Ron says, I'm also with SongTrust, but I still register my works first with BMI, then with SongTrust. Well, that's interesting. So you can still register with BMI and, it, and will SongTrust double register it? Will they register it as a different name or will they just not fool with it if, if it's in there? Can you tell them not to register with, with BMI? These are the questions I have for SongTrust. And I, I hope to maybe do a video with them. That, that's what I'm kind of hoping for. I think I've emailed them already, but no to no avail. So yeah, I'd love to know more about this, Ron, about Song Trust and uh, if they get involved. They don't get involved with Content ID, I don't think, but they could be very useful in getting royalties from overseas and other royalties that you might not be focusing on. Although I know that they do not collect neighboring rights, which I have a video about as well, and because uh, I, I, I talked to them about that and directly got an answer saying that they did not collect na neighboring rights, at least the neighboring rights I was talking about. So very interesting to know. So all of these things, sync royalties, stock music income royalties, which also, by the way, I call sync royalties. When you talk about music that someone is paying you, a, a fee that someone is paying you to use your music, I call that a sync royalty. We're just syncing it up in this case to videos rather than to television and film. So I kind of count stock music income as sync royalties. Um, and then BMI, which is performance royalties, and then content ID, which is royalties to the rights holder of whoever owns the song that is put on YouTube. And so, yeah, that's all of these royalties uh, are what's part of the ups and downs. Hey, Signature, thanks for being here part of the ups and downs of royalties. And that is just what is happening these days with royalties. You can have a, a $500 check like I did two weeks ago at the beginning of the month that helped a lot from Content ID. And then you can have a month where you don't may even make enough or a, a whole quarter where you don't even make enough to be paid over $100. Uh, so it could happen like that. and. You can have a, a royalty check like this from my PRO where it's you know three digits and then you can get the next one is two digits. You're like, why? Uh, and, and then you just never know what is going to hit on a specific check. And it, there's almost no way to, 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 to accurately know. Same with stock music license. You just never know from month to month how things are going to sell. One month you're, you're making this much and then the next month you're inexplicably making much less. And you're like, what is going on? So all of these things, all of these music royalties, they all are things that we have to just live with, live and let live and uh, ups and downs. And you just need to be ready and you need to be uh, just accepting that this is the life. This is the, this is the way it's going to be with our, uh, with our music and our music royalties. And far as this income stream is concerned, um, uh, this is it's just the way it is. So don't feel dismayed if you've got a bad PRO check this month. I got one last time and I get it, but uh, just make sure that you keep an upper lip, a uh, firm upper lip and keep pressing on, keep making more songs, keep putting more in. It's a game of attrition, my friends. And so just be sure that you are doing that. Well, everybody, thanks for joining me. Remember that uh, you want to go to streams. This is the place where I'd really like you to join. This is a place where we can interact and you can interact with lots of other people. It's it's not a dark, scary place like, uh, like Discord. Although I, I value all my Discord people. We have great conversations in there. But yeah, come on over. And if I can get to the screen, come on over to streams. The water is fine. We do lots of things in there. And I'd love to have you there. You just go to musicincomestreams.com and you can be part of Music Income Streams and be part of, we just call it streams. We're streamers and we have fun over there. And when you join free community, free eBooks and courses, all the music streams info, trying to get all that information that we have on Discord and get people talking about it here on streams as well. Because there are going to be different people on Discord than there are going to be on streams. And of even more serious income talk in some of our other levels. So, yeah, come over here. Choose a plan. Join for free. Free, free, free. 
and be part of, of music income streams because I'm having fun on it and it's fun to check every day and fun to see all you guys there. So come and join me there. And as Andrea says, come on in. The water's fine. So yeah, join us there and join me on Wednesday for the seminar, Why Everyone is Wrong about stock music income. I'm not saying I'm right. I'm probably wrong most of the time too. I know what's right for me. And so come to this seminar. There will be free things. There will be free things given away. There will be free a free course will be given away. The stock market course will be given away to somebody. Uh, ebooks will be given away. Uh, co coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching will be given away. What is going on? What kind of person would do such a thing? So, Come to that on Wednesday. That's all I got for you today, folks. Thanks so much for being part of the show today. Had a great time. So much great questions and a lot of value in this particular podcast. So thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. Have a great day. Andreas, Signature Music, Ron Patton, uh, Art, thanks for being here and for the great questions. Brad, for good, good stuff there. Natuno Soundtracks, thanks for being here. Ragdoll reacts. Yes, you did react. And thanks for being here. Nick B Designs, keep up those great designs. Rob Green, thanks for being here. Anybody else? Arco, uh, I know you're drowned in assignments over there in, in the UK. Keep working, my friend. Work hard, and you'll be glad you did when all this is over. All right, everybody. Thanks so much. We'll see you next time, and thanks for joining me today. See you later. Bye-bye.